Okay, welcome back to another episode of Jay's Speed Shop. Um, rainy Saturday here, so we're going to try to knock out a couple things on the uh, Trans Am. Uh, sorry about the background noise. we got the AC on. It's humid as hell here right now. Um, got a little white script garage going on, on the on the TV. So the uh, I'll turn this around and kind of show you what we're dealing with here today. So we took the uh, Trans Am out to Cars and Coffee last weekend and got... Uh, let me go back one more weekend. We went out, to, took it out to dinner, and went to leave, and it wouldn't start. And discovered what I thought was just the positive terminal was loose. Um, tightened that up, and it seemed to be fine. And went up to Cars and Coffee last Saturday morning, and got home, and uh, or actually went to leave to come home, and wouldn't start. And so borrowed a wrench, tightened up the. Uh, Battery terminals again, to the point where I actually eventually end up stripping the positive, so it's not no longer making good contact at all. So we got to replace that today, and then I am pretty sure it's the starter, but we're gonna put, replace that battery terminal first and see what happens. But we were at the car's coffee for about four hours, so I don't think the uh, starter was. I think the starter was cooled off enough. That was the longest road trip this car has been out. It was about an hour drive to get there, but it wasn't like a real hot day, but um, definitely had some starter issues on this car, starting with the, uh, uh, when we first got running, or tried to get running, uh, still had the factory start on the motor. This motor sat in storage for 10 years. Um, that starter was no good. Um, put a rebuilt one on that lasted for like three starts. Uh, went back to Aurelia. It's got another rebuilt one that lasted for about three starts. And somewhere in that process, I had them test one of the ones I picked up. And it was, I mean, dead right out of the box off their shelf. Uh, so ended up spending the money on a new one. I don't remember if it, it, it was a, I think it was a GM starter or not GM, but Delphi starter, I believe. Uh, the new one I got, but I don't remember for sure. And that was about last fall. So this is June. So that was last fall. Um, and it's worked perfectly since until the other day. Um, still not, I mean, the car hasn't been driven. The car sat in storage all winter, so it's not like it's really got much in the way of use on that starter. It's probably been started, I don't know, two dozen times at the most. So I'm not sure why it's going through storage, if I'm just having a string of bad luck. But we're going to replace this battery terminal, see if it, by any chance it does start. Um, and then we'll pull it up, put it up on the hoist and look at the starter and see if what we can do down the meal. Maybe something came loose. You know, this thing all just got put together. Maybe something loosened up down there. Um, if not, I've got a new starter for it. I got a Bosch. And uh, we're going to put some heat shielding on it. That's one thing I don't think I think of is with the headers on this thing. Maybe it's because the starter's getting too hot and it's melting something. Um, so we're going to uh, put some a couple layers of heat shield on it and uh, see if that helps. So you can just pull those, uh, and I'll show you what it looks like, but you can just pull the little terminal bolt out of these fittings. It's got the Basically, all it holds it in once you unscrew know, from batteries is this outer ring of rubber. She's got, got this really tiny screwdriver and just kind of pop it up on one side and kind of work your way around and it pops right out. And then you can actually then pull, if I can get this off, and you can actually get to your terminal. So I'm just going to clean that up real quick. It's really not too bad, but I'm just a little oxidized. So we'll clean that up while we got it apart. Basically, this is, see, this is my old bolt. You can see, we stripped the end of it off. The threads in the battery look okay, so I'm hoping it was just this that got damaged. And we got a nice new shiny one. A couple bucks, you get them in your auto parts store. Rock got those orders set from Rock Auto. Okay, so we're going to put the new terminal in. Um, I just cleaned up with the wire brush, real light wire brush, cleaned up the fitting there. Oops, and it goes that way. It slips back down in place. And then you just put your terminal back. If I can get this all camera, this goes back in there, and it's going to be the kind of same process again, just to try and get the uh, this outer piece of rubber back up over the terminal. Okay, this really small, small screwdriver works pretty good to get in there and get it up there on top of it. There we go. 
Put yeah. this battery back up for a second, just to, just out of curiosity, to make sure that that was not the that I really have a starter issue. I'm pretty confident because so I had these I had this torqued down to the point where eventually I over torqued it, but I'm pretty sure it was a good enough connection here. But I don't think this was the problem. Tighten that. Brought power back. This GM side terminals are the biggest pain in the ass design. I don't know with this car. We'll probably get, I don't know, it'd be tight having top terminals. It was actually. Thinking about switching at the tops, but I don't know they would clear the hood. Okay. Sure. I think we're gonna go ahead and put it up on the hoist and put the heat shielding on the existing starter. Or maybe I'll swap the new one in. I don't know. We have the side. Let's keep this one as a spare. See how we do. I got probably have to pull it to put the heat shielding on anyway, so I might just put the new one in. I'll look down there too. I so said there could have been something loose, could be could be a loose connection. I said so the car we triggered the car 50 miles, got towed. 10 miles, and then we had a trailer at home last weekend, about 50 miles, 60 miles. So it got jostled around. So there was something loose that might tighten up enough to uh, start. But uh, we'll uh, get it up in the hoist and we'll see what we got underneath. Okay, so we got uh, pretty, uh, just trying to get what we got to do here. Pretty good access to the starter on this thing. Um, you see, this the starter's not that old. It's got quite a bit of, this was a new unit. Um, it's got a lot of, kind of bubbling in the paint and surface rust like I don't know if that's from the heat you know see it's pretty close to the to the header right here I can see there you go it's, I don't know two fingers width between that and there's so we're gonna put that heat wrap on it and uh and see what that does but pretty easy to get out we have loosened up this bracket that I made that just holds the transmission lines in place so these give you a little bit more flexibility to get out of the way and then just the two bolts to, to get it out. So pretty, and then obviously the, there's two uh, electrical connections on the back. So pretty straightforward. Okay, so we're gonna uh, get this starter out. First thing we're gonna do here is disconnect. That's Derek, This is give us a little bit more room, move these transmission lines all the way. Get it out of the way. 13 millimeter. Well, that's how many brackets are you have that in your car, but 13 millimeter. Oh, you know, before you do this, you disconnect your battery cable up at the battery.
Okay, this new stir has a different design. It doesn't have, this one's got this short bolt that goes on the engine block side. Whereas the new one uh, has like kind of the same length bolts on both sides. So it actually comes with a replacement bolt. Now the trick is I need to not lose the old starter bolts so that if I ever have to uh, put an original style starter on, I got the right bolt. Two bolts and it basically falls out. A little tricky to get the nose out of there. Disconnect two lines at the top here. I don't remember what size these are. Fairly small. It's that small. Seven. Ten. Eight, maybe. Eight millimeter on the small terminal. Get these off and we'll go over to the bench and kind of compare the two story pictures. New one looks like the right one. Gotta save this bolt with a new starter net. Come with this. Bolt lock washer there. And then we just gotta get this big one off, which I think is on 13. Probably a 13 millimeter. So definitely no, not have an issue with any of this stuff being loose down here. This is nice and tight still. So that was definitely not my issue. So I'm going to guess that this thing got overheated, even though we're only cars and coffee. We're cars and coffee for. So there's a few hours it may have just uh, been enough heat that it still wasn't ready to start again. It fired right up today after it sat for a few days and I towed around. So this little factory shield on the front, I think, is going to have to come off to put this other wrap on. Well, that's okay. So I'm watching uh, my script garage on YouTube doing Mount Rocky Mountain Race Week while I'm uh, working here today. Okay, right, so here's the, the new, this is the new starter. This is a Bosch unit. Um, pretty similar in design. The only thing different is this ear. See, it's got this little one inch tab ear here where this one has the full length, kind of like the uh, other side is. The, uh, you can see on this one, how oh, this paint, and this was a brand new, this was not a rebuild. If this was a rebuild, I could see this was all rough, but you see the paint peel and start to rust underneath. Makes me think that maybe the heat was getting to it. You kind of see it all the way around. Um, so we're going to, uh, it's kind of interesting the difference in style. Like this one's got this little, I assume this is a drain hose of some kind, where the new one doesn't have that. I mean, it's got a little hole in the back. There, and it's got that hole there, but it doesn't have this. I'm pretty sure that this was a um, Delphi piece here. So anyways, we're going to try this uh, this new Bosch unit. We're going to put some heat shielding on it and uh, see how it works. Okay. So we're going to put this heat shield. i got two different things. One is this one that just kind of sticks on. It's got uh, like a foam backing. And it uh, you kind of mold it to the shape of the of the starter, and then I got one that kind of goes all the way around, wraps around, velcros around. So we're gonna put both of these on and see if uh, 
So basically what they say to do is just kind of form this and what this to the right shape before you start pulling the, uh, the backing off. So we're just going to kind of get this form to shape. And I think what I'm going to just do is trim these corners just a little bit so that the, uh, the little vent holes on the bottom aren't covered up. So in case we... Uh, That is all I need. Then we stick this down. Should give us some pretty good shielding from the heat of the headers. <clears throat> this was a little factory uh, heat shield that clicked on there, but that's not going to fit with this one on there, so we're going to leave this one off, I guess. So that's pretty much it. Got that form to shape. So so probably what I want to do next. Just to make sure that sticks really well we're just going to use a little paint prep all right make sure there's no uh grease or oil on this thing And then the, uh, the directions on how to put this on is you're supposed to actually uh, peel this tape off from the inside. So kind of grab it here in the middle and start it up. You're not supposed to start peeling from the outside. I'm not sure what the difference is, but that's just what the instructions say. So we'll follow them. Yes, I sort of read the instructions because it was only two pages. Oh, interesting. I feel some of the sticky stuff kind of came off with the backing. That's not good. So basically there's like a two-sided tape. Oh, maybe that's... Oh, shit. So this isn't going to stick with a shit. Excuse my language. Well, we'll see how it does. Well, you can see this, the tapes, two-sided tape stuck to the backing. And let me see if I can, maybe? Probably not, because it kind of took the backing with it. So that's not going to really work. Oh, give it a shot here. Still has quite a bit of tape on it. And then, uh, hopefully that'll be enough to hold it in place. When we wear up the other Velcro one around it, that should hopefully be good. Hard part will be getting in there to get on the wires. So 
that's basically how that goes on. Hard part's gonna be getting in here to screw down the bolts. A little bit would be a little bit difficult. Probably could have gone with one size smaller than this, but this should do it. You probably want to do this. Just thinking out loud here, maybe have it so that that uh, overlap hangs down on the back side of this. So it's not flapping around, it'll be kind of between the starter and the block. And it kind of gives us two layers of heat shielding from the headers. Hopefully that's enough to make this thing last. Okay, right, so we got the starter back in. You can see it's got the uh, heat shielding on it now. So hopefully I'll protect it from the, uh, from the heat. Was, um, I, I didn't take this cover off here, but with this new design, see this one's got where instead it's got, I don't know what you call this, but the bolt boss here that the bolt goes through. This longer design on this Bosch starter it was a little tough getting in because of this bracket here. It, was a little, it kind of took a little more wiggling than normal to get it up in there because of this longer boss on the side of the starter, but whatever, it got in there. Um, so everything's tight. We'll uh, put it down here, make sure it starts up. Um, but hopefully uh, this will be enough. I got between the two layers of heat shielding I got on there, it's going to be enough to protect this thing. And uh, if that was even the problem. So I guess it's still not 100% clear because he said when I fired it back up, it uh, today it fired right up. I'll give this new starter a whirl here. I'll see if it's working. Doesn't like stirring after the battery's been uh, disconnected. But it starts. So it starts with the new uh, starter, so we're gonna put it back down and take it for a little test drive. <laughs> 